You might as well give up. I'm... Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and this is everything you need to know before season two of Invincible. So we kick things off with an attack on the White House by the villainous duo called the Mahler Twins. We were supposed to be inside. I should have never trusted the flawed calculations of a clone. And then enter the Guardians of the Globe. Now this team is made up of the Immortal. He has super strength, durability, flight, and can be resurrected if he dies, hence the name. You betrayed us! You should have stayed dead. War Woman has super strength and speed, and she's basically a play on Wonder Woman. Don't you do enough for the world? None of us do. Darkwing is pretty much Batman, and he flies around on this levitating surfboard. I don't have to be everywhere. Only where I'm needed. Red Rush is a Russian flash. My perception is just as fast as I am. Green Ghost can walk through walls. Don't move. You're safe now. Martian Man is like Martian Manhunter and shares the ability to shapeshift. I never expanded myself to that extent. And Aquarius is like Aquaman if he looked like an actual fish. Go f another fish, asshole. This attack on the White House is also where we first meet Nolan Grayson, aka Omni Man. You're welcome. Now, Omni Man is not part of the Guardians of the Globe team. However, they do work together from time to time. He comes from the planet Viltrum, and Viltrumites are very similar to humans in appearance, but they have super strength, durability, and they can fly. They fly now! They fly now? They fly now! Now, Omni Man claims that he came to Earth to be its protector, but we later find out that is a bunch of BS, but more on that in just a bit. Next up, we meet the star himself, Invincible, aka Mark Grayson. Now, when we first meet Mark, he has yet to access his superpowers. Mark is Omni Man's son, so it's always been assumed that he would one day inherit his father's abilities. Nolan is very frustrated that his son has reached age 17 and has still yet to exhibit any Viltrumite powers. Even the latest bloomers on Viltrum would get their powers before what would be their 18th birthday. When Mark finally does get his powers, he begins training with his dad. Good, but try it a little more like this. Like what? <gasps> After some trial and error, Mark starts to get a hold of his new abilities and has his first super fight with a guy called Titan who can turn himself into stone. Who the hell are you? I'm... I guess I'm working on that. When Nolan sees Mark in his homemade costume, he says, You look ridiculous. Nolan then takes Mark to get a proper superhero suit. Wait. Super suits? Am I getting a costume? Now, as Mark is getting the hang of the superhero life, we see him struggle to balance school, friends, and even his relationship with his mother. I love my boring, powerless, everyday run-of-the-mill mom. And I love my whole son. Later, we see Mark have his first big battle with a villain called Kill Cannon. You guys think you might have bitten off more than you could chew? That building has a hole in it! Mark wins relatively easily considering he has the same powers as his dad, which basically means he's Superman. And this fight is where Mark debuts his hero name. I'm... We then cut to the various members of the Guardians of the Globe being alerted to meet at their base. As each member arrives, they soon realize that it was an ambush by Omni-Man. Omni-Man brutally murders each member of the Guardians, but suffers some brutal blows during the fight. After killing the Guardians, Omni-Man is found unconscious by the Global Defense Agency. They assume that Omni-Man was also attacked by whoever killed the Guardians and that he is the lone survivor. Someone murdered the Guardians of the Globe last night, but no one was the only survivor. Now, as Omni-Man lies comatose, an alien race called the Flaxons attack the city. There's some kind of attack happening downtown, it seems. This is where we meet the Teen Team, another superhero group consisting of Adam Eve and she has the ability to manipulate molecules. There's also Duplicate. She can, well, you know, duplicate herself. Rexplode can blow stuff up. I'm down to pocket change here. And of course, there's Robot. Me living is what matters. Then I have bad news. Invincible joins the teen team in their fight against the Flaxons. Now, eventually, the Flaxons retreat because they begin to die of old age. Now, just say right now? Well, time moves differently where the Flaxons are from, which causes them to age quickly when they're on Earth. They ran off because, because they were dying of old age. The next day, Mark recognizes Adam and Eve at school as his classmate, Eve Wilkins. I'm Adam Eve but the rest of the team just calls me Eve. Eve was part of a superhuman experiment before she was ever born. Her mother died in childbirth and then she was adopted. Eve discovers at a young age that she has the ability to see individual molecules that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Eve then ends up getting sent to a school for the gifted and when she's a little older, she discovers that not only can she see particles, but she can control them. I can make stuff. Like, 
out of thin air. Eve begins to use her powers to fight crime and soon learns about her true origins from Dr. Brandyworth, her creator. You were one of my projects, Samantha. A superhero with almost limitless potential. Shortly thereafter, Eve is forced to battle her siblings, which are other individuals who were experimented on, but those experiments were unsuccessful. Each attempt less successful than the last, but all one big happy family. Eve learns that her mother actually survived childbirth and that she's been kept alive all these years and used to create more superhumans. Where do you think all your brothers and sisters came from? So after the death of her mother and Brandyworth, Eve joins the teen team. So back in present day, we see Mark and Eve go together to the teen team's headquarters so they can be properly introduced. Oh, hey, it's the Iceman. Rex. Couldn't have won that fight without you. Oh, except we did. Meanwhile, the GDA is investigating the slaughtering of the Guardians of the Globe, and here it's that we meet demon detective Dark Blood. Help us solve the case, oh great horn Holmes. A few days later, which was decades for the Flaxons, they return to Earth to conclude their invasion. The teen team and Invincible assemble again to defeat the Flaxons. Right back at ya, buddy. <laughs> So Omni-Man recovers from his injuries and continues training Mark to be a hero. Mark then gets a call informing him that the Flaxons have returned. Again, only this time, Omni-Man gets involved. Now Omni-Man sends the Flaxons packing, but then he takes things a step further. He travels to the Flaxons' planet and ragefully obliterates it. You don't seem to understand Earth isn't yours to conquer. Following the destruction of the Flaxen homeworld, we get a funeral for the Guardians of the Globe. Omni-Man speaks at the funeral and assures the world that he will serve as its protector in the absence of the Guardians. Who will save us now? I will. Later, Darkblood questions Omni-Man about the attack on the Guardians. Saw nothing, heard nothing, attacked in darkness, left for dead. Are you insinuating something? And with the Guardians of the Globe all being gone, Cecil is now in search of a new team. He recruits Robot from Teen Team to form a new Guardians of the Globe lineup. But I want you to come work for the GDA and build me a new Guardians of the Globe. Robot holds tryouts for the new team and recruits Adam Eve, Rexplode, Monster Girl, Shrinking Ray, Black Samson, and Duplicate as the new Guardians team. But shortly thereafter, Eve quits due to turmoil with Rex after he cheats on her with Kate. I can't be on the same team as Rex and Kate. In other young love news, Mark finally calls his crush Amber and invites her to hang out with him. But Mark ends up skipping out on the date when he gets called in to stop Doc Seismic from destroying Mount Rushmore. Mark and Eve beat Seismic and Mark returns to find Amber still waiting for him and then Eve walks in on them smacking lips. Meanwhile, in supervillain news, the Mahler twins escape prison with the help of Robot and Dark Blood continues his work to investigate the murder of the Guardians of the Globe. Seven dead, one alive, your husband. Omni-Man and Invincible continue their training and Mark learns more about his father's alien heritage. We've ended wars all over the universe, brought peace to thousands of galaxies. So as the walls begin to close in on Omni-Man's brutal massacre of the Guardians, we see Omni-Man threaten Darkblood and tell him to keep away from Mark and Debbie. If you threaten my family again with your conspiracy theory bullshit, you kill me. I won't have to. And Red Rush's wife, Olga, vents to Debbie about the death of her husband and airs her suspicions. They know who did this and they don't care. As Nolan and Debbie's relationship becomes tense, he offers to take her on a couple's vacation to Rome, while Mark is escorting NASA on a mission to Mars. Pack a lunch my ass. While on Mars, we see the astronauts get taken hostage and they are sentenced to death by the Martian Emperor. The Martian Emperor fears that if they are left alive and are allowed to travel back to Earth, they could unknowingly be infected by an alien called the Sequid. The Sequids are the very reason I captured your people. They are a world-destroying race. Invincible is able to rescue the astronauts and return them to Earth, but little does he know that one of the astronauts has been replaced by one of these shape-shifting Martians. Now back on Earth, Cecil is fully aware that it was Omni-Man who murdered the Guardians. In fact, he's known this all along, but he orders Darkblood to stop his investigation so that he can figure out for himself why Omni-Man did what he did. Later, we catch back up with Titan, and he's working for a guy called Machine Head because he owes him a lot of money. If you didn't just finish paying off your your debt. I don't need your money anymore. Sure you do. Mark continues to balance his personal life, his relationship with Amber, and of course, trying to be a superhero. While Eve, on the other hand, has temporarily hung up her cape. Too busy saving the world? Not anymore, actually. Titan reaches out to Invincible for help defeating Machine Head, so they team up and attack Machine Head's headquarters. The new Guardians of the Globe team come in to help. Now, during this fight, though, Invincible gets his clock cleaned by Battle Beast. I was promised this world offered worthy opponents, but oh, how you disappoint. Killing you is an act 
of mercy. In fact, Battle Beast beats down the entire Guardians of the Globe team. And later we see Debbie find the journal that Dark Blood left in her closet. Now, Debbie decides to take Omni-Man's costume in for examination by Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum's the guy who makes super suits for all the heroes. This examination confirms the worst, that Omni-Man was indeed responsible for the Guardian's murder. This is the oldest blood on the suit. Nolan struck first. So Debbie confronts Nolan about this discovery. Don't lie to me! I know! I know you killed them, Nolan! In a fight with a big cyborg, Mark gets recognized as invincible by his best friend, William. Mark? Run! And Amber ends up breaking up with Mark because he's always disappearing. Eve was wrong about you. So was I. After Debbie's confrontation with Nolan about his involvement in the killing of the Guardians, she's called to the GDA by Cecil. Here she learns that Cecil has known all along that it was Omni-Man who killed them. Nolan killed the Guardians of the Globe. I know. Mahler successfully creates another clone of himself with the help of Robot, and Robot then uses the cloning technology to create a human body for his own consciousness to inhabit. And this is a clone of Rex Splode's body. Why the f do you look like me? How the do you look like me? See, Robot all along had been controlled by this guy. Well done. Now the reason Robot did this, why he made himself a good looking human body, is because he is actually in love with Monster Girl and wants the two of them to be together. Later, Mark finally reveals to Amber that he's invincible, to which Amber says, I know. She knew? Well, then, then why did she break up with him? Why did she act like it was a big deal when he went away from her at the college? This makes no sense. Well, because she was upset because he didn't tell her earlier. Oh wow, person, there is something I need to tell you. Oh, what is it? I'm a talking dog. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I didn't tell you sooner. It's okay, buddy. Anyways, when Omni-Man arrives back home, he finds the GDA spying on him and he kills them all. Cecil then deploys this giant robot to kill Omni-Man. You wouldn't dare. Robot, or Rudy, along with the Mahler twins, then revive Immortal. Where is Omni-Man? Where is he? So Immortal immediately goes to find Omni-Man and kill him, but Omni-Man kills Immortal again, and this time it's broadcasted on live TV. I'll kill you! With everything now out in the open, Omni-Man finally asks to have a talk with Mark and tell him the truth. Omni-Man explains to Mark that he wasn't sent to Earth to be its protector. He was sent there to be its conqueror. Our most trusted officers were each given a planet to weaken. I was one of those lucky few. Omni-Man attempts to convince Mark to join him, but Mark refuses. We can finally do what we were meant to do, be who we were meant to be. You lied to me. Omni-Man even refers to his wife, Mark's mother, as his pet. I do love your mother, but she's more like a, a pet. Showing his true disdain for humanity. Omni-Man and Invincible, father and son, then get into this huge fight. God against God, very reminiscent of the Battle of Metropolis and Man of Steel. Omni-Man beats Invincible relatively easily and almost kills him as he lays blow after blow into his son's face. You want to die for this planet? Fine! What's 17 more years? As Invincible is just a few punches away from death, Omni-Man begins to remember his son as a young boy. Uh, damn it! Now filled with guilt, Omni-Man spares Mark's life and flies away, leaving Earth. And the world now knows the truth about Omni-Man. How could someone who promised to keep us safe, to protect us against any threat, become that threat? So Cecil, Debbie, and Mark work together to fake Omni-Man's death. Nolan Grayson officially died when the house across the street exploded from a gas leak. And Mark and Amber get back together. Detective Amber, ready to help out on any tough cases that come up. Mark then catches up with Alan the alien. Now Alan is a Unopian, and he was born in a Unopian breeding camp following the neared extinction of his people by the Viltrumite Empire. Alan convinces Invincible to join the Coalition of Planets, an organization that protects from Viltrumite conquerors like Omni-Man. Coalition is trying to unite enough worlds to stop the Viltrumite Empire. We then see the Mahler twins get arrested again, while Immortal is shown to have survived his second death at the hands of Omni-Man. And that's where season one left off, laying the groundwork for the upcoming second season, which we're going to be covering right here on this channel. Big shout out to the writer of this channel, Mr. Colton Ogburn, the guy who's trapped eternally in our television, but he does not know that, so please don't tell him. So is there anything about Invincible season one we didn't cover? Any questions? Let us know in the comments below or at either of us on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.